Some people think that the cartoons of today are racist, offensive, stereotypical, and cringeworthy. But if you look back at the cartoons from back in the day, you realize nothing can compare. Sport Roadster is very popular in China. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. I'm back with another video. And this is a video that I feel some of y'all may find interesting. I found this interesting and really like introspective looking back at these cartoons because recently I was on Twitter and there was this thread of like old racist cartoons. And I was like, okay. But the thing that got me was the different reactions, the different responses to it. Where it was like, oh, back in the day, people weren't so easily offended. Back in the day, they can get away with this. Oh, somebody did this now, it would be a, a big thing. And I'm like, wow. Seeing the different responses, seeing how many likes and comments certain tweets got, it makes me realize, it made me realize how differently people think when it comes to these things. You think you know, you have no idea. And I'm like, is it just because it's a cartoon from back in the day, from the 1940s, where people are like, oh, that's the humor back then, that's how people thought back then, I don't take it seriously. Whereas, you have the other perspective where a lot of people was like, oh my God, I can't believe they got away with this. What were they thinking? Oh, children was watching this. Oh, I lose my face. <laughs> So then I decided to look back at some of these old cartoons that people were talking about, referring to, and give my own reaction to them. And I want to know y'all opinions on it because if you look back at some of these cartoons from the 1940s and beyond, you'll be like, oh my God. So that's why I decided to look back at some of these old racist cartoons that could be stereotypical and offensive. This is from back in the 40s and 50s and 60s. To see what y'all think about it because this seems to be this tug of war of oh it's not that serious it's not that offensive i found it funny versus i can't believe they got away with this what were they thinking first clip i'm gonna show y'all is from like 1940s 50s era and it was supposed to depict the different kind of cars certain people would own now here's how they said white men would be Exaggeration, but you get to see that sense of like, oh, the all-American family, the all-American white male. Now look when it goes to the Indian man. The Indians go for this classic convertible. Y'all see how they had the Indian man dressed in that stereotypical attire with the stereotypical headdress, right? That Native Americans are known for wearing. And then he has a convertible, but he has to have a TP tent attached to it. It's like, really? Wait a minute, hold on. Now mind you, this is the 40s and 50s. This is that stereotypical idea, right? And a lot of people could look at that and be like, mm, it's not that serious, I don't get the big deal, whatever, whatever. But then you look at another cartoon, like Peter Pan, where they had Peter Pan and his friends dressed in that attire, Peter Pan doing the I look at that, I'm like, wow, that clip from Peter Pan was from 1953, and somehow, that offensive imagery and mockery to some found its way into the 2000s. Cause I remember little kids in my class doing the Whoa! pretending like they had bows and arrows. Cause that was a stereotypical look and act of Native Americans to little kids. Let's go into the next offensive stereotype this cartoon did when it talked about the kind of car a Chinese man would drive. Fort Roadster is very popular in China. You see the common themes I'm talking about? I talked about this before with the chain triplets in the Proud Family series where they had buck teeth, real slanted eyes, right? And in that clip, y'all saw that the man seemed to be some type of emperor. He had buck teeth, slanted eyes, and the car wasn't even being driven. It was being pulled by a labor worker. Basically, like in China, in Asian culture, a lot of things are dependent on labor. Speaking about that in today's terms, how many times have you seen something say made in China, made in China, made in China? How many made in China jokes have y'all seen or heard from when y'all were younger or even now? All the different type of products made in China. That labor joke, the man pulling the car, 
And then you got the buck teeth and the slanted eyes. This Asian stereotype of them having slanted eyes and buck teeth was even seen in the Flintstones from the 60s. Oh, yes, it's make for togetherness. Hi, ah, yes. Y'all saw that? And on top of that, he was teaching a karate class. A similar thing I talked about years later in the 2000s with the Proud family, how the man had buck teeth, slanted eyes, teaching a karate class. Like that's all most Asian men are known for. When it's not pressuring their kids to get good grades. Y'all see how these stereotypes followed and developed over time. Smile. Okay, kids, there's no pressure. Y'all see how some of these stereotypes were there back then? And they even transcended into the 2000s era. And here's another one from The Lady and the Tramp where you had the two Siamese cats. And you know, Siamese cats, when you look it up, they have origins in Asia, but they decided to give that stereotypical look to the cats, giving the cats buck teeth because there was a Asian cat, you know, a cat from Asian origin. The cats had to have buck teeth and really slanted eyes. You know, cats already have cat eyes, but they gave them real slanted eyes and have them speaking and singing in that. I'm not gonna lie, when I was younger and I heard that and I seen that, that melody stuck in my head. But looking at it now, it's like, wow. Some people, like I said, will be like, oh, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Okay, you know, that was the times. And other people will be like, damn, they was really racist. And here's the thing, when it comes to being racist or stereotypical or being offensive, it's like a Venn diagram. What's the difference and where does it meet in the middle? Right? Because some people would be like, no, that's not racist. That's just offensive. That's just this. That's just disturbing. That's just, you know, a bad joke, bad writing, you know, bad sense of humor. My thing is, when it comes to racism in these cartoons, do you consider it to be like, oh, no, it's only when it shows hatred towards another race. Oh, I hate this. I hate that. I can't stand a certain race of people or perpetuating negative aspects, negative stereotypes of a certain race. Do you consider that a part of racism or do you just consider that offensive? Could somebody please make it make sense? And some people will be like, no, there's a difference between being racist and offensive. And some people will be like, no, they all connect. It's all under the same umbrella. Just because you're not specifically directly saying you hate a race, doesn't mean you're not showing hatred towards them when you're depicting them in such a bad light like those images and cartoons what do y'all stand with that and y'all knew this was coming y'all knew this was coming when it comes to the depiction of black people because you know we are the asian people you got the native americans the indian people but with the black people and how black people were portrayed back then in the day it's like Whoa. Like for example, check out this clip from the 1930s from the Betty Boop show where it depicted a black mother trying to shut her black baby up when they were watching a show. Oh my God. Whoa. Y'all saw that? She stuffed the watermelon in the baby mouth. They ate it and it was like, <gasps> that made the black baby happy eating watermelon. I'm like, and I've seen this many times. I like, where did this idea that black people love watermelon so much come from? You know, they made them extra dark. You know, the mother played into that mammy stereotype, which I'm gonna get into, cause there's some more examples. And she stuffed the watermelon in the baby mouth. Stuffing the watermelon in the baby mouth, in the black baby mouth, was the equivalent to like giving a baby a pacifier. Y'all catching on? I know some of y'all get it, but I'm like, when you think about it, and this is the 1930s. Wow. And if it wasn't watermelon, it was fried chicken. Where did these ideas come from? You know what? I might do a video discussing the origins of some of these stereotypes that were depicted in animation. Let me know what y'all think about that. Speaking of the mammy stereotype, this was something really seen in the 1930s 
where it depicted a uh, heavy set, larger, really dark skinned black woman who represented the idea of servitude, where she was a subordinate to white people working for them, cleaning their house, feeding their kids, babysitting their kids, cooking dinner for them. She always wore a bandana or a hair wrap or an apron. And she was real black, real big, real sassy, and mm -mm 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 -mm. that type of thing, right? Look at this clip from Tom and Jerry in the 40s. Why, well, how to do, Mr. Tom? Hurry up, honey child. Land thing. Hurry up, honey child. Oh my God. Now, for those of us that know about Tom and Jerry, we know that in most aspects, they didn't really talk, right? Tom and Jerry just chase each other, beat each other up. That was the gist of the show. But for this, they had Jerry portray a mammy, in a way, do blackface. Have that real stereotypical mammy southern accent, talking to the baby, honey child, come on, honey child. Come on, baby. Come on. And then talking to Tom, the cat, like he was above her. Hey, Mr. Tom. And then you talking to the a little black disobedient baby. Come on, honey child. Now, you done pissed me off. And like I said, people think that cartoons of today, you know, the Proud Family, the Family Guys, y'all think those are offensive. Back in the day, they really didn't give a shit. Down like huh. that, okay? Huh. Huh. And mind you, there were kids watching this. Over time, as people woke up to how offensive this imagery was, these cartoons got banned, but you can still watch them online today. And that's why I was like, wow, looking at these cartoons, this was really consumed by kids back in the day. You know, I'm pretty sure adults watch it too, but these were the general ideas people had against black people, Asian people, Native Americans. While, you know, for the most part, white people didn't really get depicted in any kind of way, but being the example of how American family or American man or how the average life is supposed to be lived. But when you have black people, you had the Asian people, you had the Native American people, you had imagery like the ones I showed y'all. Sometimes. Always? Not always, no. Sometimes. That means sometimes. You know I'm not done. Look at this clip of Bugs Bunny. You know Bugs Bunny. Who doesn't know Bugs Bunny from the Looney Tunes? This is supposed to be a clip when Yosemite Sam finally caught Bugs Bunny. But you notice Bugs Bunny has this slave look and breaks out into the slave talk. Don't beat me, master. Please don't beat me, master. Don't beat that tired old body. No, no. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait. Oh my God, hold up. Some people found this entertaining. And the thing that really got me is I looked through the comments and I seen a lot of black people saying, oh, I'm black. I found that Bugs Bunny clip funny. Oh, that Looney Tunes clip was hilarious. Oh, I didn't find nothing wrong with it. That was the humor at the time. What do y'all stand with that? Looking back at it, for me, knowing the history, knowing that things like this really happened, and the fact that the writers and animators took their time and energy to create this and broadcast it for millions of kids and adults around the world, you know, in America at that time to see, it's like, wow. I don't find it funny as much as I find it interesting to look back on and be like, whoa. Like I say all the time, with animation, there's this exaggeration that you don't get to do with real life people and humans that act in these shows and movies. But with animation, they get to stretch real life, real themes, real stereotypes of certain people, certain demographics, certain races. And seeing these clips, and seeing how many different perspectives people have when it comes to them, it makes me feel kind of indifferent about it. I'm not furiously mad about it. I don't think it's hilarious. This seems to be like a borderline neutral response when it comes to me. And seeing the years, 1940 this, 1950 this, 1960 this, that's not that long ago. Think about it. Some of the people, some of the kids that watched this when they were younger, some of them are still alive today. These are the ideas. This is the imagery. 
that they were being presented with when they were younger, when they were children. Not to say that, you know, it affected them where they think, oh, all black people, all Indian people, all Asian people look and think and act like this. But there is a correlation in some sort. So anyways, guys, that was just my take and my thoughts on this whole debate I seen on Twitter where people were looking back at old, racist, stereotypical, offensive cartoons and seeing the different reactions to it like, oh, people are too sensitive nowadays. Like it's not that serious. Another thing, are people being too sensitive or do they have a right to be because the imagery and the stereotypes were offensive? One of the main questions is, would you have found that entertaining? Do you still find that entertaining looking back at clips like that? And even in today's animation cartoons that feature tropes or imagery like that in a way, just presented differently, do you just chuck it up as, oh, it's just a joke, it's just animation, it's supposed to be funny. People are too sensitive nowadays. Or do you see how offensive it really was, still is, and how, sadly, some people still think like that today. Please, let me know your thoughts down below. I can't wait to get this discussion started with y'all. I know y'all gonna have a lot to say because we know we're talking about the Proud family, we talk about this, we talk about that. But looking back at these old cartoons where they really had no filter, they really didn't give a fuck, right? It was outright raw, direct. Like, you was meant to know this is what we were trying to say about this specific demographic. Where do y'all stand with that? What do y'all think about that? And how do y'all see that translated over time to the 2000s and even to the cartoons and animation we have out now? And when it comes to that discussion of racism or a cartoon being offensive, do you see these cartoons as racist or do you just see it as offensive? Because some people say it's not the same. Where do y'all stand with that? Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.